VS Code is a great free IDE. It's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux, but unfortunately it's not available for ARM boards like the Raspberry Pi. Or is it? Because Visual Studio Code is open source, there are community builds that anyone can use, and today we'll be installing Visual Studio Code onto a Raspberry Pi. The community build of VS Code we will be using is called Code OSS, and it is available from the Code Melted GitHub page, who also provide a handy site with installation instructions. Now, I ran into a few issues with this standard installation, and there's a couple of things we need to do in order to make this work for us. Firstly, we need to manually add the GPG key to our toolchain. On the instruction website here, there is an area called Public GPG Key, and we need to right-click where it says Download here and copy that link, because we'll be using it in our terminal in a moment. To add the GPG key, we need to open a terminal, and we need to type wget space dash capital O space dash and paste in that link. You can do that by holding Control Shift and V or by pressing Edit Paste. Um, you also need to add a pipe and then sudo add dash apt space key space dash. This takes the link that we just downloaded with wget and it adds it as a key to our keychain. Now that we've installed our key, we should be able to continue the installation as normal. However, the current version of Visual Studio Code provided by CodeMelter doesn't work on the Raspberry Pi. I'm sure that will be fixed, but these install instructions don't work right now. Um, you might find that by the time you watch this video they do, and that's great. But right now, the way of fixing it I found in the issues of the CodeMelter GitHub, and that is simply by installing an older version of Code OSS. So you'll see I'm copying here an apt-get install code OSS version 1.29. Lots of numbers. Um, I'll link that in the description so you can copy it yourself. And I'm pasting it into the terminal here. Um, and I, I say apt-get install. I press enter. And of course, it doesn't work because I forgot to say sudo. And I do it again saying sudo apt-get install code OSS version 1.2.9. And because we have the GPG key already installed, it will install on our system. I'm going to continue following the advice on the GitHub page where I discovered this way to make it work. Um, they suggest holding code OSS. Now, uh, what holding something means is it will not be updated when everything else in your system is. So by uh, entering apt mark hold code dash OSS into your terminal window, if you're me, of course it won't work because I forgot to put sudo again. But now um, code OSS will be held. It won't be updated. If you want to start updating it again, simply put apt mark unhold code dash OSS and it will be returned to the list of things that are updated on your system. Now we can launch Code OSS from the Raspberry Pi menu and give it a few seconds to load. Now this load time will vary depending on which Pi you are using and it can take a little bit longer to load up for the first time. I've no idea why, I've just noticed it having installed it on a couple of different Raspberry Pis. The first time it opens, you will also be directed to Microsoft's documentation for VS Code. Now, uh, it's a bit annoying that it happens on the Pi because it slows everything down quite a lot, but it is worth bookmarking this site because the documentation is great and the program is highly customizable. Now that we're in Code OSS, you will see that it pretty much is VS Code on the Pi. So if you've ever used VS Code before, you'll be right at home. Opening up some code will show you the immediate highlighting that you are used to. Now, um, as you can see, this code is in Python, so let's install the Python extension. This extension is available at the VS Code extension market, and you can get there by clicking on this panel on the left-hand side. It looks like a little square. And it provides auto-completion and code formatting, along with a few other things. Once this extension is installed, you will need to reload the window, and you can do this by clicking Reload, or doing as I did and quitting the program and reopening after closing a few things down to free up a little bit of memory. On reopening, you will see that the Python extension has been installed. You'll also probably notice a couple of errors in the bottom right hand of the screen. If you use PyLint, you likely already know how it works, and you can get rid of this error by installing the correct version for you. If you don't use or need PyLint, then you can just ignore this message. The other message is referring to the Python language server. The Raspberry Pi isn't able to use the standard server, and in fact for a while there was a bug which meant that it ate up to 30% CPU, CPU usage even on a MacBook Pro, uh, but Code OSS is just letting you know it's going to use Jedi instead, which works just fine and sounds way cooler. You might also be used to using the terminal in conjunction with a code editor to test your code out and to run things. Now VS Code has a terminal built in, so naturally Code OSS does as well. Here we're going to run this Python script directly from Code OSS by holding Control Shift and P to open the command palette and selecting Run Python File in Terminal. 
So you will see the terminal in Code OSS is showing the LED shining on and off, and hopefully you can see my Raspberry Pi and LED doing the same thing on the screen right now. As you're about to see from the horribly redundant code I'm about to write, code suggestion and autocomplete works as expected. Also, just because the Pi is usually known as a thing that uses Python, it doesn't mean you have to just use that. I installed the C Sharp extension, for example, because C Sharp is clearly the best programming language, and I decided to mess around a little bit with that, and as you will see, autocomplete for C Sharp works perfectly well. This is despite not having .NET installed on the Pi, meaning that you could technically develop on the Pi even for things that do not run on the Pi. However, I haven't tested any languages for which that is true yet. All languages that you are likely to want to code in are covered as VS Code extensions, and if you search the extension marketplace on the left hand side, you'll likely find an extension that will help you with your code. One last quick note, live share for VS Code does not work out of the box on the Raspberry Pi, but let's not get carried away, we've only just got a fully featured IDE working on a Raspberry Pi. And this is a game changer to me, and I hope you found this tutorial useful. Now, as always, there's an article to go along with this tutorial on the Make Use Of website, and if you are new here, consider subscribing to the Make Use Of YouTube channel. We do giveaways and reviews each week, along with tech tips and tutorials, but until next time, take care.